Okay, today I want to give to you some secrets I've gathered over the years as to how I filled my life with core memories. I'm going to do that in four simple steps. Okay, so let me tell you a story. So this is Jimmy, the average person, much like you and I. And Jimmy, he does a lot, right? He travels around the world. He does a bunch of extracurricular activities outside of school or work, or whatever. He plays instrument, he plays basketball, he does theatre, things like this. And he hangs out with friends, right? He celebrates things and he generally does a lot of things, right? His, his schedule is not like empty and he does nothing. He does stuff, right? But he doesn't really remember, right? He can't seem to think about what he's done even in the last year, for example. What did I even do in 2023? He asks himself, right? Maybe you might relate to that. What did I do that year? I can't even remember, right? And so he has this attitude and this kind of self-talk in his head. He says, my life is boring. I've done nothing. Like, how sad is this? Right? Even though he's lived like a full life and he's done stuff, he doesn't feel like it. And why is that? Right? Even though he knows he's done stuff, he doesn't feel like it. Right? Do you relate? So here's Jimmy's mate. Right? He's not done nearly as much as Jimmy has. But paradoxically, he has a lot of stories to tell. He has a lot of memories. He seems to have lived a full life and he feels that way, right? So how is this possible? How is it possible that Jimmy's mate hasn't done as much as Jimmy has, yet he feels like he's lived a full life? He doesn't have that self-talk of, oh, what did I do last year? I don't have any memories. I haven't done anything. How sad is my life? What is that about? So I'll tell you, I too was like Jimmy. I too had no memory of what I did even last year. I thought to myself, oh, I haven't really done anything. Like, what is my life about? Like, what, what is this? I need to do more things, right? But then I learned the secrets. The secrets of cultivating and keeping memories in your brain so that they are fresh and readily available for you to kind of bring out. You can just close your eyes and walk down memory lane and be there in the moments that you experienced in the recent past, even in the, in the distant past, right? Even if I were to say, you know, what did I do in 2018, right? I have some memories that I can pull out and think, okay, I did this, I did that. I was this year's, this many years old. I went to a party in August and this person was there. I had this conversation and this happened, right? I can pull out memories like that. And there's ways to do that, the secrets that you can learn and they work. Right? The stories that I can tell, the memories that I have, and a true feeling of a life well lived. And that's what we're really looking after here. That true feeling of a, a mind full of core memories. Right? And you can see in the previous videos that I've made, like, for example, the videos in my car, like the stories and the memories that I'm able to kind of give to other people, not just for myself, right? These secrets I learned because I wanted to have this for myself, but it it benefited me even more so in that I could tell other people my stories and tell other people my memories and pass on that skill that I developed myself and benefit other people with it, right? And I struggle to describe what it is, is, is exactly like. And the closest I come to this kind of feeling is it's like resurrecting dead memories, right? It's like you have all these memories of your past and you can just bring them back to life through the secrets that I have to tell you about today, right? And it's kind of like this image, right? You can kind of close your eyes and you have this kind of surround sound kind of like memory bank of like bright spots and things you can just be like, oh yeah, I remember doing that. I remember this event at this point in time, right? And it just, it's so, like it brings it back to life, right? It's as if you're in a video game and your own past memories are locked characters or locked parts of the game and by playing the game you unlock these memories and you just get a, a whole like brain full of these memories that you can unlock right using the methods i'm going to teach you about today right i'm so excited to teach you so the biggest impacts for me are in telling stories and the feeling of a full life right if you know me you know i love talking to people right i love conversation in general and i love the fact that I can tell stories about stuff I've done, even though they aren't the most exciting things in the world, I can tell a whole bunch of stories about them, 
right? And the feeling of a full life as well, which is what you're here for. Like, I feel like a lot of people want that feeling, right? Not just at the end of your life when you're 80 years old and you want to look back at your life and think, oh, I have no regrets. I have nothing that I wanted to do. But that that's a valid point. But what about here and now? What about when you're 25? What about when you're 20 or 15? Don't you want that feeling of like, oh, I've, I've done stuff. Right? I have a feeling of a full life now. Right? Why wait till you're 80 to have that feeling of like, oh, I can look back at my life finally and then be happy? Why wait till that point when you can get it now? So, my name is Dylan Alexander and today I'm going to teach you what I learned over those over the course of a few years throughout my life from childhood to where I am now in learning the ways to cultivate memories and create core memories in this kind of way. I'll teach you all the secrets to learn here. Okay, and I'll do that through our philosophy, right? And our philosophy is not to be an NPC or a sheep, not to be the average person because the average person ends up like this, right? Divorced, obese, less than 1K in the bank. We don't want to aspire to be average. We want to aspire to be different, right? And to be different means to be extraordinary, it means to be above average, it means to be happier than the average person, right? I painted a picture for you at the start of Jimmy, the average person, right? Who can't seem to remember much of his life who can't seem to get those happy memories, right? And so we want to do those different things and be willing to think outside the box, be willing to accept truths that many people don't, right? And so that's what it means to be a thinker. It's kind of a, a word or a phrase that I've kind of coined here as a definition of what I believe to be someone who is on the path to success because they think about the things that they're doing instead of just doing stuff for the sake of doing it, right? Because the majority of people that I look around today, they don't think, they just do stuff on autopilot. But if you want to be successful in any area of life, including the memories in your life, then you have to become a thinker, okay? And that's what we're going to take you through today. So firstly, there's going to be four steps I'm going to take you through for the bulk of this lecture. And then there's a Q&A section as well. So if you want to submit questions for these lectures, there is a link in the first link in the description or the first pinned comment below as well. So click on that if you want to submit some questions to these lectures as well. Okay, so the four steps are the granddad mindset. Number two is a photographic memory. Number three is record your life. Number four is tell your story. I'll break all these down in this lecture today. So the first the granddad mindset. So this is a mindset that is, in one phrase, live for the story. Right? There's a phrase that people often mention called rocking chair regret. I talked about it just a minute ago, where we look back on our lives and imagine ourselves to be at the, the tail end of our lives. 80, 90, 100 years old, however old you think you might be, and you look back at your life and you're in your rocking chair Maybe you've got a family around you and you think, what have I done in my life, right? What have I achieved? What have I accomplished? What stories do I have to tell? What, what is it that I've done in life, right? And so when you think in that way, it becomes clear that you have a choice right now to influence what that person in the future has to look back upon right? So imagine yourself in that rocking chair and think to yourself, I want to live for the story. This is a phrase that I like to tell myself whenever I think about this kind of thing. I want to live for the story. Like, should I do the boring thing or should I do the more exciting thing? I want to live for the story. There's a choice you can make, right? One path, let's say path A leads you down to something that's, you know, maybe safe, maybe secure, maybe a bit more boring. And not a story you could tell, really. It's not really something that you could say, oh, I did this thing. It was boring, it was safe, and nothing really happened. And let's say choice B is a bit more exciting. 
There's a story behind it, right? I tried this thing. It might have been a bit risky, right? And it was, I didn't know what I was going to do, right? But I did this and then that and I failed and then I got success and I made a lot of money and I injured myself. And there's a story you can tell down path B that is a little more story worthy than path A is. So in life, you get to choose what direction you can go down, what path you want to go down, and that influences what stories you are able to tell when you get to that age of being a granddad or being a a grandma, right? Whichever you are. So that choice leads to a direct ability to have more core memories in your life, right? Which makes a better story? Which path makes a better story? And so live life in that kind of way. Live for the story. So this means in daily life, for example, not spending your days on your phone, scrolling through Instagram, but instead doing things that will lead to that point in your life where you're able to tell stories, right? So can you really tell a story about your day scrolling through Instagram? Is that something, is that a story you can tell, right? Like imagine trying to tell that story. Oh yeah, I I spent three hours on the toilet scrolling through Instagram. That's a a bad story, right? But instead, if you were able to be like, you know, I traveled the world. I, I went to Indonesia. I got lost. I got scammed out of my money. I was homeless for two days. You know, I met some random guy in the street. He gave me a place to stay. I slept on the, on a bench for a night, right? Those are stories you can tell rather than having this kind of like, these aren't memories. These aren't core memories. But something like this, where you're like lost traveling or like where you're just doing something more exciting, those are memories that you can keep forever. So the less of this you do and the more of this you do, the more exciting your life will be and the more exciting of a memory you have of life, right? So with that being said, let's move on to this one here, the photographic memory. This is probably the biggest part of the lecture. So it's one I really want to hammer home in big detail, the big one, right? This is the practice of using photos to enhance your memories. So how do we do that? There's five steps here. I'm breaking this down to like as much detail as I can. The first is backing up photos. Okay. So most of us have technology today where we can we are able to back up our photos onto a cloud app. Right? So for me, I use this app. It's called Google Photos. So if most of you, if you have an Android, you will have this automatically on your phone. And this I believe is Apple Photos, which also has like an iCloud version of a photo bank that you can have, right? So these are all saved to the cloud, which means they're on the internet and it doesn't matter if you lose your phone or anything like that, you keep your photos on this cloud app, right? And pay for the extra storage. It's worth it. It's very, very cheap and it's so worth it because the alternative is, okay, look, here's what people say. I don't want to pay for extra storage, right? But the alternative is deleting your life's memories, okay? And think about how serious that is. You're going to delete parts of your life so that you can never have any reference to them ever again. Really? Like, how much would you pay to keep your life's memories? Most would give their life's savings to keep their life's memories, right? And yet, what do I pay? I pay 80 a year for two terabytes. It's quite a lot. I've not even used 10% of that yet, right? And that's 80. Think about how cheap that is. You don't have to spend 80. You can can get like the 200 gig version, right? You can get the, so typically it's like, depending on what your plan is, right? A 200 gig is 100 gig, right? Depending on how much you need, how many photos you have, you might choose different things, right? And they're a lot cheaper. Like, Like let's say they're like, I don't know, like maybe this is 40, maybe this is 20 a year, which is so per year. That's so cheap. It's such a no-brainer, right? Like that's one day's work and minimum wage for a lifetime of memories. 
Like, I don't know what else to say here, right? That's a no-brainer. I don't know why you're still thinking about it. You should do it now. Do it now, in fact, right? Forget the video. <laughs> do it. If I if I can help you, if there's one thing you can take away from this video, it's this. Just do at least do this. If you want to click off, you can click off, right? And I'll be glad I've helped you in that small way, right? Number two, look at them. There's no point having a bank of photos if you don't actually have a practice of looking at them. So how do we do that, right? For me, the biggest thing has been, instead of scrolling through social media, scroll through your own photos, right? You'll be surprised how much of a a trip down memory lane and how exciting and how nice of a feeling it is to go down those photos and go down memory lane, right? Instead of scrolling through Instagram, uh, through photos that you don't really care about. Photos of other people in their lives trying to show how glamorous their lives are, but instead you can strengthen your own core memories and remember things you did in your life, right? It sounds boring. I know it sounds boring to you, like compared to scrolling through Instagram, oh my goodness, Instagram, wow, I'll click on that. That's what you're thinking in your mind when you're going on your phone. But genuinely, it's such an amazing thing. And Google Photos especially will give you things to scroll through, right? It will give you the the one year ago today. That's an example, right? One year ago today, you did this. You went to Wales with your family and this person was there and that person was there and whatever, right? And here's some other, other examples, right? There's the one year ago today thing. There's the holiday highlights. So if you go to like Croatia in one summer, it will be like, oh, here's the time that you went to Croatia in 2017, right? Here's some highlights from that period of time, right? So it like has like a, uh, a feature where like it tracks where you were when you took the photo and it shows you, okay, here's your holiday, right? Including like the plane and the, the you know, the boarding and everything like that. You have all those photos. It's like a memory that you can just like go down, right? Similarly, like, okay, here's what you did in summer 2017. Here are some beach photos, like beach photos throughout the years. Not just one day you went to the beach, every time you went to the beach. Here are a couple photos from each of those points, right? And these things, Google will automatically feed you. So if I go on my app right now, like I don't know where my phone is right now, but if I go on my phone right now, Google will show me. He'll be like, okay, here are some memories. This is automatic, right? It's like on the, on the top of the page, on the top of the, if you open up Google, right? Pretend this is a phone, right? You have your photos down here. And on the top, there'll be like stories, like stories on Instagram, right? But they'll be your own memories. Automatically generated like this, Right? And it's such an exciting thing to go through. And it's such a, I know it sounds boring to you right now, but it's such a great thing to do. And it's one of the biggest secrets that I have to share with you about this, right? So something extra that you can do, right? So what I talked about above was like the automatically generated stuff that Google gives you in terms of like showing you stuff. Like, look at this, look at this. Like every time you open the app, it says, look at this, right? Things you can do on your own is search today's date, right? So whatever date it is today, you can search the 15th of June and say, oh, what did I do on 15th of June in 2018? What did I do 15th of June last year? What did I do 15th of June 10 years ago, right? And these memories will surprise you because it's an oddly specific date, right? And you, you typically have lost the memory of that. You typically have forgotten, and in that way, you can remember that again, right? You can remember that lost memory, and it will come back to you. Similarly, you can search this month. You can search June as a month, and it will show you June five years ago, June 10 years ago, June 15 years ago, right? And imagine that ability to just, like, travel back in time, right? I don't... Since I've started doing this, it's like a no-brainer to me that I do this every day. I'm like, oh, I'm excited every time I wake up in the morning. Every time I grab my phone, I'm like, oh, yeah. I wonder what photos I can see today about my entire life of memories, right? So today's date, this month. Search a person. So most cloud 
photo banks will allow you to search a person. It will recognize the person's face and you can assign someone's face to a name and you can search their name. Or you can search for a person. So I can search for my mother, for example. I can get every photo I have with my mother in it. Right? And that is a feature you can do as well. You can search a location. Like similarly to the thing I discussed before with the holidays and things like this. I want to know, for example, if I if I moved away to a different city for a, a good chunk of my life, like five years of my life, I want to see all the photos in that city, right? And it will show it to me, right? And so in these little ways, you can chunk up the memories in your life and think about what you did during that time and have a little period of like reminiscing about that. Instead of scrolling through things that you don't really care about. Do you really care about like some Instagram post about someone's life? What do you care about more? Your own memories or what someone's, you know, avocado sandwich looks like today? Right? And when I put it in those kind of terms, it's obvious that your memories are more important than that. Right? And number three, delete them. Okay? This seems counterintuitive because you want to keep your memories, right? Why would you delete your photos? Okay, so I want to explain that after a little break. I want to go get some water. and I'll be right back after this break. See you in a bit. Okay, so continuing. So before the break, we talked about deleting photos. So what on earth am I talking about here? Let's go through this. So there's a typical things like flyers, business cards, posters that you won't be needing anytime soon. Like they're like very single use like okay there's a flyer for an event that's happening next week and so a year from now that's going to be irrelevant to you same with business cards posters things like that you're probably not going to need them right so delete those if they're not relevant in your life right duplicates right if you've taken like a hundred photos of the same scene like you've taken a hundred photos of the same mountain range right from the same angle from the same place then pick your favorite three because when you're going through your photos when you're looking at your photos you don't want to scroll through 100 photos, right? Pick your favorite three because when you're looking at them, you're only going to look at like two or three max, right? So at least pick your favorite three. Pick your favorite one if you can. But pick your favorite three if you're really struggling to, to choose, right? That's with duplicates. Things that you have duplicate photos of, right? So this is a, a double whammy, right? The act of deleting photos is in itself a trip down memory lane because going through your photos to find which ones you have to delete is in itself looking at your photos, right? So that's benefit number one, right? And number two, it's a spring clean, right? So you're kind of cleaning out the clutter of your photos so that they're more enjoyable to look at when you do it later on, right? So when you've done it, uh, so if you've cleared out like a month of a year at some point, when you come back at a later point to look back at that month, you'd be like, oh, it's so much cleaner. It's so much more kind of, more more like dense in terms of memory per photo, if that makes sense, right? And the last benefit is that it also saves storage space, which is like the, the, the spring cleaning aspect of it. So if you're worried about having to delete photos because of your storage space, like that is like the, the, uh, the thing about storage space and people not paying for it, right? I'm out of storage space, but I'm not going to pay the, you know, 20 pound a year that it would take to save my memories but instead I'm going to delete all my photos because apparently I don't care about my memories, right? That kind of attitude is just, it's so lost on me. I won't bark on about it. Let's just continue on. A warning. Don't get too trigger happy, okay? Don't go and just delete everything because you're so excited about it. Oh, I'm going to delete all my photos and uh, stop, okay? Wait, warning, okay? Here are some precautions when deleting photos because I have definitely regretted some photos I've deleted in the past because of certain reasons. And I didn't really have this framework that I'm about to tell you to tell me which ones to, which photos are appropriate to delete and which are not. Okay. So rule one, keep all photos for a year or two before considering deleting them. Okay. This just helps you to be able to realize what a memory is looking back rather than what it is like maybe a day from now or a week from now because you don't know in your mind what that memory means to you when looking back right you're not really looking back at the memory it happened very recently right so you don't know what it means 
right? So wait a year. I like to wait two to just be absolutely sure that it like, you know, definitely doesn't have any significance in my life before I delete it, right? So wait for some time, okay? Rule two, never delete photos of yourself just because of how bad you look, okay? This is a big one. A lot of people, especially a lot of girls, like to delete their photos because of how bad they looked on a certain day. But again, go back to rule one, right? Wait a year or two because I guarantee you will want to know what you looked like when you were in your ugly phase, right? Or before you lost weight or before you had that glow up, right? You will want to know, right? Even if you looked bad and you, you, you're you now like in shape, you're looking good, you'll want to know what you looked like back then because it's like a progress, right? Like a before and after picture. I used to look like this, now I look like this. And you can literally directly compare and think, how much have I grown, right? So wait a year or two and then don't delete those bad photos of yourself. Right. And other people too. Right. So maybe people that you care about a lot, you have a lot of photos of them and you might think, OK, I don't want to keep an ugly photo of someone. But if you're going to delete a memory for that, then don't do that. Right. Just because someone looks bad in a photo where you were, you know, doing some camping. Right. Don't delete the memory of you camping together just because the person looks bad. Right. The memory is the memory and the person is the person, right? Keep the memory, right? It doesn't mean that you think of the person as ugly, right? It just happens to be the case. So be more careful about what you prioritize here. Your memories or how you look or how other people look, right? And rule three, question when deleting. If I lost this photo forever, would I care? Right, that's the ultimate kind of nail in the coffin there, right? When it comes to finally deleting the photo, you have to think to yourself, would I care? Like you might be trigger happy about taking photos in the first place, right? So when you're on a holiday, everything seems amazing to you. You take a picture of, okay, like a landscape. Cool. You can take a picture of your shoes. Mm, Okay. You take a picture of an ant, right? Don't know about that one. So maybe a year or two later, you look back at those photos and the shoes are like, You could have taken your picture of their shoes anywhere, right? But if it's a picture of your shoes and in the background is like the building you stayed at, right? Or the shoes are on on like a step where the entrance to the hotel was, where you were staying was. And that's a memory. Then that's okay. You can keep those. If the picture triggers a specific memory of a place or a time or a thing you did, then don't delete it. If it's just something that just does nothing to you, if it's just my shoes and there's like the background tells me nothing, right? If it's like a a blank white background, for example, to make an extreme example of it, then I'm like, okay, that's just my shoes. Like I have them right now. Like it doesn't really mean much to me, right? So that I might delete, right? If I lost this photo forever, would I care? If If the answer is no, then delete it. Long-term effects of this is that you get to explore core memories without the trash, right? If you delete your photos, then you don't have to filter through all those kind of like blurry photos, duplicate photos, pictures of things that you don't really care about. And you get to, as you scroll through time, you get to be like, wow, that thing I did. Wow, that thing I did. Wow, that thing I did. And the like, it's the density of core memory to per photo, right? If that makes sense. Right, so like maybe every 10 photos, there's a core memory. Whereas before, it would be like every 100 photos, one core memory. Does that make sense? So you're trying to like condense the quality of photos you have in your photo bank so that you have a better database to explore your core memories. That's the point of deleting photos in this step here. So... Here's a question. What about exes or other people who are very important to you, but not anymore? Tricky question here, okay? My advice would be, if you've just broken up, being reminded of that person hurts, right? So my advice of looking back at those photos, maybe pause that for some time, right? So stop doing that for some time, maybe a month or two, and deleting them personally, So see rule two, 
wait a year or two, basically, right? Wait a year or two before you delete those photos, same as any other photo. And at the end of the day, it is your choice. For me personally, having been through relationships and broken up with people, I'm glad I waited a year or two. Because looking back, they're nice memories, right? And maybe the relationship was rocky towards the end and you don't really, you know, you maybe you have some bad memories, but a memory is a memory, good or bad. Whether at the time you were in pain, suffering, failing at something, or you were succeeding, happy, and with people you love. A memory is a memory. And if you were to delete the, the bad memories in your life, so that you could only leave the happy ones, yeah, it's a choice you can make, but ultimately you have less memories. Right? And whether something is bad or good as a memory, there's an element of perspective there. Do I look at this memory as bad or do I look at this memory as good? It's a choice I have in my brain as well. Right? So it's your choice. It's a difficult scenario. But having done this kind of thing recently and going through my photos, my choice was to keep them. Right? Because... Yes, it does affect me right after the the event happened, right? But I'm so glad I kept them and I waited a year or two, right? And I can look back and think, that was a nice time. I know that we're not together anymore, but that was a nice time, right? And so that's my advice for that part. Step four, take more. Take more photos, right? So I'm not going to ask you to like, you know buy a camera and like have all this expensive like a camera equipment you have an excellent camera in your pocket that you carry every single day and it's called a smartphone most people's smartphones have cameras that are like elite level in terms of quality and like the the pictures you can take right if you have the average iphone right now you have a camera that is like really quite good right it, to capture a memory the quality doesn't need to be that great but thankfully, our technology today is more than enough to capture that kind of memory, right? So take more photos, bring your phone out and take those pictures, right? But then you got to learn when to stop, right? Because there are scenarios where you don't live in the moment because you're on your phone, right? So my advice would be live in the moment, not through a phone screen, right? Instead of recording this, you know, fancy thing happening, look at it in person, right so maybe record like five seconds of it and then put your phone away like enjoy what the person's doing in that moment in time right instead of like trying to like get the perfect framing and get the perfect lighting and like there's a question you can ask yourself am i gonna look at this like what like maybe i can snap a picture of this happening and then put my phone away do i need to record it right so there's a, a balance to be struck between recording events in your life and then putting your phone away and actually enjoying the moment so that you have something that's different from the visual to look at, to look back upon. I remember how this place smelled. I remember how the sounds in the surrounding area. I remember tasting different foods in this area. I remember the colors, the sights, the sounds, all those other things that are different from just a picture or a video, right? So learn when to stop and put your phone away so that you can enjoy the moment. <laughs> so there was one year where I went to this Ed Sheeran concert, right? It wasn't in 2024. It was, what year was this? 2022? I'm not sure. I think summer 2022, right? And I witnessed something there that was quite upsetting to me, right? It was these people who were next to me and... They were, they spent the entire time with their phones in front of their faces recording everything that was going on, right? This like one, two, three hour event where Ed Sheeran was playing live, right? And I was there and it was, it was such an amazing thing for me because yes, I took like a photo or two of myself and the person I was with and the, the, the stadium and then I put my phone away and I enjoyed my time in that area, right? Whereas these people, 
had these phones right in front of their faces and were enjoying it through a phone screen. I tell you what, I looked across at them and they didn't, they didn't really seem to be happy people. That might be a coincidence, but I think there's a correlation there. Right? If you're going to live life through a phone screen, then that doesn't seem to result in a happy life or to result in a happy memory. Right? Like if you were to Google or YouTube this Ed Sheeran concert, you would get footage of it for free. Right? You don't need to record this kind of stuff. Right? Taking a picture is enough. Then put your phone away and enjoy the moment. Right? That's my my little rant about those people at the concert that I went to. And friends as well. Right? So take a look at these pictures. These pictures are of me hiking in different places, right? And none of them are pictures that I took. They are pictures that friends of mine, family of mine took of me. And they are stunning photos. These are memories that I hold very dear to me. And the reason I had them is because I had friends who were willing to take pictures of me, right? At these different points in time, right? And so if you go on a lot of hiking trips, that means good views. Plus photographer friends equals good pics, right? Especially if you have friends that are photographers that actually want to do that for a living and they actually know what they're doing around like a very expensive, complicated camera. That's cool, right? (laughs) So value your friends who are photographers, right? And return the favor, right? Like, don't, don't just expect to get photos from people who are photographers. Actually take pictures of them as well, right? So take pictures because, like, take a picture just because they look cool, right? That's how that's the kind of friendship you should be having with people, right? You think, oh, man, he looks so good right there. And just, like, sneakily snap a photo and then show him later. Mate, I thought you looked so good in that jacket, mate. I snapped a photo of this and send it to them and, like, just kind of share, like, that's a... That's a true sign of good friendship, right? Appreciating when your friend looks good and trying to capture that moment for them so that they get to keep it for their lives, right? So return the favor in that way. And like, it's a mutual thing. You get to give and take in this way and it's, it's really nice to be able to do, right? So the third step, record your life. What am I talking about here? So beyond photos, beyond just like, you know, pictures and things like that, scrolling through your photo banks, things like this, there's things like journaling, right? I have many journals of periods of time in my life and I have thoughts I've written down that it's similarly like a walk down memory lane, just to think about or to realise what I was thinking at that point in time. And sometimes I surprise myself. Right. I've keeping I've been keeping journals for a very long time in my life and to go back and read what I was thinking when I was 16 it blows my mind. I'm like, "Wow. I thought like that? That's really weird to me." Right? And it's such a it's a mind-blowing experience because it's something that you'd completely forgotten about until the point you'd read it. I forgot I did that. Wow, we did that, didn't we? Right? And that in itself is worth it, right? Just for the pure surprise of memories in your own life that you've forgotten existed. Somewhere deep in there, but you didn't know it, right? That in itself is good. But then developing that memory in your mind builds those core memories, builds those core memories, right? And this paper versus digital, right? So you can... Journal on your computer, journal on a piece of paper, journal in a book. And there's even Twitter or X. Like, for example, I tweet, like, random things every day that I kind of, like, are thoughts that I have that that might be useful to other people. But they're mainly for me, right? I'll be honest with you. They're mainly, like, notes to self of what I was thinking at the time. So I can scroll back through those a year from now and think, oh, that was what I was thinking at that point in time, Right? And vlogging, right? You might think this is a bit cringy, right? And if you try this, it will be cringy for the first few times. But this is one of my favorite things to do when I have something to say and I want to record it down. I don't have time to write all these thoughts down because it's like a 10 minute idea I have to speak about. 
And if I wrote all that down, it would be like pages and pages and pages. And so sometimes when I get some time to be alone in my car, I put my phone in my phone holder in my car and I just record a few words about what's going on in my life right now. And I just, I leave it be, right? And with that, I upload it to a YouTube channel that is a private YouTube channel, right? So none of those videos are public, right? But it gets to be like that because it t- it doesn't take up any space in my own personal photo bank, right? So all those videos that are private to me, like a journal, like a vlog, they're marked with dates, right? So like 24th of July, 2023, for example, right? So I can search through those dates and think, okay, what it was I thinking at this date? I can maybe label it with something. You know, I can label it like, oh, I'm going to talk about uh, a time when I was depressed or something like that, right? And I can listen to what I was thinking at that time. And it's such a magical experience to be able to like time capsule a thought in your brain. It's like when Harry Potter, those people, they would like get a memory and put it in like a, a tube or something, right? It's like that, but the real life version of it, right? And the reason vlogs are so popular is because they have this kind of warm feeling associated with them. I know Friends is not a a vlog, but it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Whether they are actors or real people, whether it's your life or someone else's, you still get that warm feeling inside when you watch things like this. And that's why vlogs are so popular. That's why TV shows like Friends are so popular, because you get to feel like you're part of that group. You get to have some insight into someone else's life, right? And the feeling is just the same when it's you and your life that you're recording, right? So record those moments, right? It might not just have to be you speaking in your car alone. It might be, you know, you baking some cookies with your girlfriend, right? Record that memory. Take a selfie, take a little like time lapse of you guys doing that, right? It's a fun thing to do and it's like a it's a memory that you get to keep forever. Right. So even letters, right? Letters that you're that people write to you and that you receive and letters that you give to other people, take a picture of them. To remember what you did or what you received. And to keep that in your photo bank forever, right? Because Letters you can lose, right? So if you take a photo of them, then you get to keep that forever. I'm not saying that you should get rid of the letters, but if you take a photo, then it's with you forever, guaranteed. Right? And step number four is to tell your story. This is one of my favorite parts, right? I want to talk about these guys. These guys are called Rhett and Link, and they host a show called Good Mythical Morning. And the reason I want to talk about them is because in this show, especially towards like the earlier seasons, they talk a lot about their own stories, their childhood, growing up, what they did into adulthood and things like that. And so I realized over time, and in fact, they realized it themselves, that because they were able to talk about their lives again and again and go down memory lane so often, their memory of their childhood is so much better than the average person's is, right? And because they shared a childhood with each other, they can verify what actually happened and what was maybe a false memory, right? And so they stay in contact with old friends and they stay in contact today, right? They kind of, you know, host this show every single day together, telling these stories. And so their memories of their lives are so strong compared to the average person. And it's something so beautiful to witness, and it was something that I really appreciated when I watched the show growing up, right? Stories are what make us human, right? That's the, think about how old cave paintings are. Hundreds of thousands of years old. We've been telling stories like this for our entire human existence. It's one of the only things that we know to be core to our human experience, telling stories, right? And the universal reaction to a good story is one of amazement 
right? Look at these people, right? Like, oh, that's a good movie. That's a good story. And if you were to tell that story yourself, they have that emotion. It triggers this intense emotion of like, wow, that's a good movie. Like somehow we have an idea of what is a good movie and what's a, what is a bad movie. What's a good story and what's a bad story, right? And so being able to tell good stories is a very important skill and that is derived from having these memories in your life, right? And this book is a book I recommend if you want to get better at that skill of telling better stories, right? It's a valuable skill to have and I really, really appreciate the ability to tell stories. It's it's very underrated, right? You might know someone in your life who tells amazing stories and you're excited when they start telling a story. You're like, oh man, Jeffrey's going to tell a story. I'm excited for this, right? And maybe there's another person in your life who notoriously tells bad stories, right? Oh, Bethany's going to tell her story again, right? It's going to be a long, rambly, bad story, right? So if you get better at telling stories, it even makes your memories better. It's not just for other people. It's for you as well. To make it more compelling, more memorable, more exciting for you to look back upon. So it might be worth sitting down and kind of like, crafting what the story looks like in your mind in terms of how you might tell it to other people, right? Which seems strange because it seems like you're making things up, but you're basing it on reality, right? And just telling a story in a way that's more compelling. So that's the four steps done right there. Q&A, awesome. So to submit your questions, I'll take you through a guide as to how to do that. I have a community page. It's free for a limited time. And if you get it now, you'll get it free for life, locked in at that price. Zero dollars a month for the rest of your life, right? No charge at all. The reason you want to get it now is because it will go up to 129 a month. So go check it out now. Click the link below, the first link in the description or the first pinned comment below as well. So check now, if it's free, join now, right? Don't miss out, okay? So first thing in the description, pinned comment below, as I mentioned. So it will look like this when you click through. Just click join group and you'll get through, okay? And there is bonus content. So a bunch of things I've recorded in the past about things and topics I'm interested in. Stuff that I don't post anywhere else. Not on YouTube, not on Instagram, not anywhere. Exclusive to this page. So if you enjoyed this so far, then have a click at that and enjoy those videos that are on there. But more about that later. The Q&A. Okay, let's have a read at your questions. Okay, first one. I feel a bit hesitant about this method of deleting photos. I get what you mean, but I'm just worried. Like, do you never regret the photos you've deleted? I understand what you mean here. It is a bit worrying to try and, like, figure out what memories are worth keeping and what memories are not worth keeping. But I think that's the fact. If it isn't a memory, then that's what determines whether it's worth keeping or not. If it isn't a memory, then delete it. If it doesn't trigger something in your mind, like if you take a picture of, like maybe you, you go you go back through your photos and you get a picture of, I don't know, a, a bottle cap, right? For some reason, you took a picture of a bottle cap, right? And it does nothing to you to look back at that. There's no context. You can't tell where it is. You can't tell when it is. You can't tell where, like what context it's in. So it doesn't mean anything to you, then delete it, Right? And you asked at the end, do you ever regret deleting photos in your life? To be honest with you, yes. And that's why I came up with this framework of precautions before you decide to delete a photo. It's because of the mistakes I made, the regrets that I have, that I've taught you how to avoid those mistakes that I made in my life. Right? So in the past, I might have deleted photos that are, you know, an ugly picture of myself. Or a photo that I just, I don't like that photo. I don't like the way I look in that photo. Like, that's the most common thing for me, right? I just wanted to curate a, a a photo bank of photos in which I looked good, right? And because of that kind of selfish reason, or that kind of like short-sighted reason, I deleted memories from my life. And that's not something that I would encourage. And that's why I spent so much time hammering home the precautions before you would delete a photo, Okay? So like waiting one or two years, 
right? Kind of like really considering if you would care if you lost that photo, right? And different considerations like that. So yeah, I do get you. And if you're hesitant, then those rules will help you to have to wait a year or two or three or four or five, right? You can wait a long time, depending on how like how much your capacity will hold, right? So you can go back only beyond five years and delete some of those photos so that you know for sure which memories you value and which photos are like not even memories yet, right? So, yeah, I think that answers the question. Okay, question two. I really like this, but I find it so cringe to record a vlog. And sometimes I think, as I pull out my phone, am I going to look at this photo over again? What's the point? So yeah, okay, vlogging, in the beginning, it is cringe, right? Even when I pull out a camera now, and it's with a friend that, like, doesn't, isn't used to that kind of thing, right? So I record sometimes when I drive somewhere, I just record the thoughts in my mind, like, I kind of speak out loud. And so when someone joins me in the car, I'm like, do you mind if I just put my phone on and to record myself here, like, record our conversation? And they're like, okay, but that's a bit cringe. Like, they, they react to it in that way, but it's just something that they get used to. There's, like, an initial, like, 10 seconds of awkwardness, and then they, they forget it's even there. And so it's like that when you do your vlogging as well in other areas, right? I don't plan on, like, vlogging, you know, like, Casey Neistat style, like, carrying a, a camera around and, like, you know, walking around like this. That seems a bit too far for me, but if it's just on a tripod in the corner of the room and you forget it's even there, that seems like a a very a, a very small cost to something that is going to give you a memory to live with forever, right? And, okay... Am I going to look this look at this photo ever again? Okay. So. I see your point, and I kind of mentioned it earlier when I said there's a point at which you take photos and there's, there's a point in which you should put the phone away and just take it in for what it is in the memory. Like the, the, the memory of the moment in that point in time in your life, Right. I was thinking about it like this. Would I regret not taking this photo? Even one single photo, right? So just take one photo. If you, if the answer to that question is yes, I would regret if I didn't take a photo right now, just take at least one photo and then put your phone away. How much does that really cost you? Not much, right? One photo to remember this point in time, right? I was on this beach take a photo of the beach, take a selfie maybe, and then put your phone away, and then go and swim. Go and enjoy the beach, you know? The point of this is to just minimize the, re the level of regret you have, right? Ask yourself the question, would I regret not taking this photo, right? And doing like the minimum required, which is like taking a single photo, right? That's That's what I want to... That's the attitude you want to have with these kind of things, to maximize your memories of your life, right? Third question. If I always did the most exciting thing in life, then I would just party all the time and be broke. What do you, or how do you live an exciting life, but also work hard or have a good career? I feel like you have to pick one. Okay, so... What I mean by the most exciting thing or the most exciting choice when you have to choose between A and B, like I talked about earlier in this lecture, what I mean is what would make the better story. So it might not be the most exciting thing here and now, right? Stories tend to focus on longer term things, right? In terms of like memories you've made in life, right? So if you party all the time, it doesn't tend to be a great memory, right? Maybe one party at one point in time is like a, oh, I remember that party, that was great, right? But if you go to parties all the time, you party, right? You drink, you maybe talk to some people, and that, if that repeats again and again and again and again, like that doesn't really have an exciting quality to it, right? Whereas if you party 
you know, every once in a while, then that might be a memory. Okay. But the point I want to make here is even boring parts of your life, like work or career, can be an exciting story for you. Right? So let's say you're trying to start up a business and there's points where you start off and you have some you have some hope, right? And there's a point where you fail, right? And you pick yourself back up again and you start to, you know, climb back up the the stairs of success or whatever, right? And there's like hardship, right? And all through this time, it might not seem like it's an exciting thing to do. But at the end of the day, you have a story. A storyline. There's hope, there's failure, there's hardships, there's success. And even though in the moment it seemed like a boring thing to do, all this work, at the end of the day, you have a story to tell. A longer term story. Right? Short term stories do exist. But with the category of work and things like that, you've got to kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture and think about what this might look like as a story you might tell to the people you're living with or the people that are around you, right? So to live as if, to live for the story doesn't necessarily mean doing the most exciting thing here or now. It might mean doing the most exciting thing in the longer term. So you have a story that spans five years, 10 years, 20 years, right? A story of work, a story of hope, failure, hardship, success, whatever it is that you went through and it might have seemed boring at the time can be the most exciting story and the story of your life. So think about that. What that really is in summary is the, it's a kind of short-term gratification versus delayed gratification. Short-term versus long-term thinking. A short-term story versus a long-term story. A party versus years of hard work. Right? And so... That's the kind of mindset you can bring yourself to to kind of decide what to do in life when it comes to building a story. So that's the end of the questions, okay? So I promised you details about that community page. So I talked about this before. Basically, what's in it? It's an exclusive community page with live calls every week, every Thursday. So I'm planning to do at least every week. I'm planning to double that and even triple that to two times a week and three times a week, right? The more people are in there, the more I get to do, the more value I can get to provide. So I'm excited to bring that to you guys as well. Alongside that, there's a high value network of people who are like-minded, who want to improve their lives just like you. There's one-to-one coaching and there's online courses as well. Okay. So the video at the about page includes all the details if you're unsure about what it even is. right? And again, there is bonus content. So if you enjoyed this so far, then absolutely go check that out. You will love the stuff that I have to offer exclusive to this page. So to recap, we had the granddad mindset. Basically, the mindset that takes into account your experience of looking back at your life when you are in your rocking chair at the end of your life. 80 years old, 90, 100 years old. You want to look back at a life full of memories and stories that you you are proud of, right? What stories do you want to tell? Do you want to tell a story about the days you were scrolling through Instagram on your phone? Or do you want to tell a story about you traveling Europe or you working on that business project or you, your life of, you know, successes and failures and big picture things that you can actually have a story to tell, right? Scrolling through Instagram isn't a story, right? Partying in your 20s, you might have one or two stories out of that, but it's not really a story, right? Number two, The photographic memory, using photos to bolster your memories that you have in your life, to remind yourself of things that you've forgotten about, right? Using photo banks and clouds and things like that to store and have a method of going through your photos that is natural and helps you to effectively walk down memory lane, right? And remind yourself of things you've done in your life to be able to have it at the forefront of your mind instead of scrolling through Instagram, instead of like just forgetting your entire life, right? Number three, record your life using those cringy methods of vlogging or journaling or tweeting things out and having a private YouTube channel and just having some record of the things that you've done in your life, 
even if it's just for you, right? Have a recording mindset. Even if you if you find it cringy, I promise you, in five years' time, your future self will thank you for recording that moment, for taking that picture, for recording that little video, for recording that time lapse, right? For having a little clip of you and your, your girlfriend cooking brownies or whatever, right? You will thank your past self for recording that moment in your life. And finally, telling your story, right? Cultivating the skill of being able to craft the memories in your life to stories that you can tell that are compelling and draw people in. To have that element of people looking forward to the stories you have to tell, right? Oh, Dylan's going to tell a story. It's going to be so exciting, right? And people want to hear what you have to say because they know it's going to be a good story. And so it's definitely a skill that is worth cultivating in your life. Like, everyone enjoys a good story. Think about those memories around the campfire, of people telling stories, and the stories that you've enjoyed in your life. Even movies and TV shows are examples of stories that you've experienced in your life. So if you can tell a good story, that is a very unmatched skill in life. So those are my methods of remembering and cultivating core memories in your life. I hope you've enjoyed that. And thanks for watching. I'm going to say something that we say at the end of every video. And that is this, knowledge is power and the power is yours. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Nice.